Regina Sanchez here, your spiritual life and health coach. Welcome to my podcast, giving you a fresh start. My heart is to help you revive the joy in your life, rejuvenate your God-given destiny, and restore your body to health. Grab a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or a glass of spring water with a splash of lemon and sit back. Take notes if you can, and enjoy the teaching I'm about to embark on. Let's get started giving you a fresh start. Hi, friends. Thank you for joining me today on my podcast, Giving You a Fresh Start. I have a, well, I had a quick message. I initially thought it would be a quick message um, to talk with you about and an announcement at the end. But um, as I began putting together this um, message, it ended up being longer than quick. So with that being said, if you want to um, go grab your favorite beverage um, and then come back and uh, pick up from there, then just put pause, hit pause, and then come on back. Uh, Right now I have a a fresh glass of my distilled water with slices of strawberry and uh, mint from my, um, my garden. So pause and then come on back. If not, let's get started. So, so thanks for joining me today. Well, the topic today that I want to talk to you about is how many of us have heart disease and not even know it. So my topic is today geared around heart disease. And according to the CDC, coronary artery disease, or CAD, affects about 20.1 million adults who are over the age of 20. So that that's about 7.2% of the population, they say. And that's a statistic based on um, gathering from October 14th, 2022. I, I did not see anything more current. Now, I don't think those statistics include those that have been harmed from the injection that was released, but I, I'm not sure. Um, I would venture to guess that that number is a, is a a bit higher than uh, 7.2% of our population. But this heart disease is not the one I want to address today. I believe the heart disease I want to talk with you about has a higher percentage affected by it. I believe that that number is tripled, maybe even quadrupled, because the heart Disease, <clears throat> excuse me, that I want to talk to you about is the disease of fatherlessness. You know, I believe we're living in a time where fatherlessness has taken over our society. We have lost a generation of children who can't even identify what gender the creator of the universe created them to be. We have a generation of children who are create, creating every letter in the alphabet to help them identify the gender class they want to experiment that day. You know, initially I was disgusted with that whole thing um, and where our nation is headed with this. But, you know, I think the Lord really put on my heart a sense of compassion and empathy for, for this lost generation. It makes me sad because it is clear that they are in a lot of pain. Yeah, you know, they could be flitting in their gay parades, dancing down the street. But let me tell you, deep in their heart, they are in pain. So what could be causing this confusion in this generation? Well, you know, I believe what the Lord has showed me, it's fatherlessness. Now, you know, I'm not saying they are all without an earthly father. I'm sure many of them are, and I'm sure many of them have an earthly father. I am saying that they are without the Father who created them, who made them perfect in his image. And when he knit them together in their mother's womb, he was very clear what their gender was. Our God does not make a mistake. But sadly, you know, it's not even just this generation of children that are lost without a relationship with their Heavenly Father. It's a multitude of generations. You know, we as a nation have pushed the father out of our schools, out of our courthouses, out of public buildings, and even churches. And yeah, you got that, even 
churches. Sad to say, but many churches do not have the Father or the Lord in their church. You know, for many, it's too scary to have a relationship with the Heavenly Father because maybe they've experienced trauma and abuse. You know, and that abuse could have stemmed from their earthly father. You know, God gives us parents, and especially fathers, to be a role model and an image of the Heavenly Father. But if, you know, those parents are not modeling that, then how can we expect the children to? You know, do we all understand the reason why Jesus came to this earth? Not only to be that sacrificial lamb for us and to forgive us of our sins, but to reconcile us to the Father. He says that no one can get to the Father except through him. So by having a relationship with Jesus and accepting what Jesus has done, reconciles us back to our Heavenly Father. You know, for me, I grew up in a main denominational church. It was a Catholic church. And I was taught, for me, I was taught to be more afraid of God than to understand his love for me. So for years and years and years, I operated from the perspective of being afraid of God. Now, you know, there is a reverential fear that we should have towards the Father. But it's not a fear of being afraid to approach him. It's a fear, a reverential fear of, of respect and reverence. And being that we want to please him, we want to be in his will and do his will. So for me, living, being afraid of God and never understanding that he loved me, and then having an earthly father who was mean, hard, and at many times verbally abusive, made it hard for me to even want to know who my heavenly father was. I grew up being so afraid of my earthly father that I became terrorized of who my heavenly father was. You know, to me, and I've said this many times in, you know, prior teachings, to me, he was this incredible, powerful being in heaven, sitting on his throne, pointing his finger at me, saying, I see you, you're a bad girl. I'm sure many have, have, have felt that way too. And that is sad because I'm sure that made him sad. But we need to know that the Father wants a relationship with us. He wants to shower his love, his mercy, his grace, and his discipline upon us so that we could be drawn closer and closer to him. You know, I remember when COVID was in full force and, you know, back in 2020 and I was navigating um Facebook and our governor's Facebook page. And I remember just watching post after post after post or, or reading post after post after post, people worshiping this governor, thinking he really cared about the people and their safety. You know, and I'm not going to get into that whole issue here. But, you know, I was shocked at the people worshiping this man, thanking him for taking care of them and on and on and on. I was dumbfounded. Thank you, Governor Lamont, for caring for us. Thank you, Governor Lamont, for protecting us. Well, there's a whole nother side to that issue, but that's what the people believed. And I was dumbfounded. And I was like, Lord, what is this all about? How could people not see through the truth of what is happening? And the, the Lord's response to me was fatherlessness. So many people are fatherless. And they bought into the fear that was being sold back then. And now they had no one they could trust to care for them. They were utterly terrorized and frightened. So they thought the governor was taking care of them. But it was quite to the contrary. And sadly so. You know, we need to take a look at our spiritual heritage what are the beliefs you are holding on to? And are they truth? And the only way to know if they're truth is to hold them up against the only place where truth is written. And that's the word of God. 
or the Bible. You know, I remember back in 1993 when I got saved and I started reading the word, but all my traditions of man from the Catholic Church were coming to haunt me. And I was just, you know, constantly on the phone with my friend in Florida saying, well, what about this? And what about that? And and she could feel and hear that I was somewhat tormented by this because I felt like, oh my gosh, am I blaspheming God, you know, by not following those traditions. And, you know, she said to me very lovingly, you know, if this is really hard for you, then go back to the Catholic Church. And I was like, oh, no, no, can't do that. That's the one thing I won't do. Well, do you know that over the course of the next year that the Lord exposed the truth to me by just reading the word? Every morning I, before I went off to work or on the weekend in the morning, I would get into the word. And all those questions that I had in my mind and all those, you know, Condem condemning feelings I had about not following those traditions, all that confusion was gone one by one. And it wasn't like I was asking daily. I, I literally put it on a shelf and I just laid my confusion down and I left it with the Lord. But through his word, over the course of a year, showed me the truth. And I'd be reading something and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the truth. No, we're not supposed to worship Mary. No, you know, whatever, whatever other tradition I was, you know, brought up with, I, I saw the truth in the word of God. So how is your relationship with your heavenly father? And, and do you have one? And know that he just yearns to have you in his life. And he wants to heal all that has separated you from him. And sometimes hearing others' stories and how the Lord healed their trauma can be helpful. Consider my book, you know, Can I Have Your Heart, Daddy? This is my journey of coming back to my Heavenly Father. And I wrote it as a guide to help others be guided to the heart of their Heavenly Father. You know, in some of the, some of the, um, chapters and some of the writings I, I wrote about, you know, what is your spiritual spiritual heritage? Because I had to take a look at mine. Another being grounded. You know, what are you grounded in? Are you grounded in him? You know, sometimes, you know, if we're not grounded in God's love, we're looking for the next best thing to fill that void in our heart. You know, and it could be a good thing, but is it a God thing? Is it what he wants you to do or be? Another chapter is we've been made new or your faith has healed you. Or sometimes he undoes us. And there have been times when he totally undid me. And God says, you know, he'll give us the desires of our heart. And then I had a few chapters on my wishes. You know, I wish I knew. And I went through a number of topics. You know, I wish I was taught this. I wish I knew this. I wish it didn't take me 20 years to find this out. So how can you have your daddy's heart? I go over it in, in my book. And I, you know, I, I hope that it would be something to help uplift others that may be struggling with a wounded heart. And that might be afraid to approach the father. He knows it. He knew I was afraid. And I share the stories of what he did for me to help me turn back to him. So I want to help guide you to the heart of your heavenly father. And below are links. And you can get a hard copy on Amazon. You can get a Kindle version. Or you can even get a downloadable PDF ebook whichever works for you. But my heart is to encourage you to love you and to help bring you to a place of peace in your life. So below you'll find those links to, to um, connect to whichever means may uh, work for you. And then lastly, I want to talk to you about a new series that I'm going to be doing starting next week in my podcast. 
and it's called Giving You a Fresh Start After Divorce. And this is much of my writing that I did back in 2012 when I had a blog called You Are a Woman Redeemed. Now, I, you know, I went through divorce starting in 2003. It lasted a number of years, uh, a number of years, not the divorce itself, but, you know, the, the sort of outlying issues continued for a number of years. Um, but the actual divorce took two years. Um, but in 2012, when I uh, lost my job and I decided, you know, it was time to start writing. And I created a blog, as I said, called You Are a Woman Redeemed. And I wrote daily um, of my struggles of going through my divorce and the frightening times it was and the painful times and how God redeemed me. And so I had over a hundred blog posts and I'm now turning them into podcasts. So I want to guide you if you are uh, one that's gone through a divorce or going through a divorce or in a relationship transition, I want to guide you and support you and love on you as you're moving into this new season of life. So share this announcement with your friends who might need to hear this message, or if it's something you need to hear, um, then, you know, click on the link and subscribe to my channels. And, you know, so you could be notified of these messages. But starting next week, I will do my first teaching on giving you a fresh start after, uh, after divorce. So as always, my friend, be blessed and remember you're loved. Thanks for taking the time to listen and God bless. Have a great day. Well, thank you, my friends, for taking the time to listen to my podcast. I hope you found it uplifting and encouraging and that it guides you to having peace, joy, love, and health in your life. If you would like more information on the services I offer, go to my website, reginasanchez.com. Or if you're ready to dive into my teachings, head on over to givingyouafreshstart.com. This is where I will teach you how to start fresh on different aspects of your life. You can also find my book, Can I Have Your Heart, Daddy, on Amazon. Be blessed, be encouraged, and know that you are loved.